Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a charcuterie board. Super beautiful, super easy, and on a budget with ingredients from Aldi. All right, if you're new here, hello, I'm Claire. Welcome, come on in, make yourselves comfortable. Are you ready to sharp? Charcuterie. I absolutely love a charcuterie board. I think it is a really classy way to make, even if you're just having dinner with you and your partner, um, it really just like elevates it to the next level. I love bringing them to events or like as a dish to pass. Charcuterie boards can get expensive very quickly. Um, if you order one that's like already made, they can be $50 or more. Um, if you're making them yourself, sometimes they can go even up from there if you choose really expensive meats or fine cheeses. Really depending on what you're putting on your board, it can get so, so expensive. I thought I would show you some of my favorite things that I buy from Aldi to make a great charcuterie board but stick to a great low budget. All right, and let's get into it. All right, like I said before, I got all of my ingredients at Aldi. I will be telling you the prices of everything. Um, you don't have to do exactly what I do here, but this is the way that I make mine super duper budget friendly. The first um, thing I wanna talk about actually is my board that I like to use. I got this at Ikea. It was 20 bucks, which is a crazy good deal, but it's really large. So if you're uh, making a smaller charcuterie board, um, you can definitely use the same ingredients I'm using today, but you'll need much less of them. The first thing I'm gonna do is toast this baguette. I love the take and bake baguettes that they have. These are only $1.75. You pop it in a 375 degree oven for eight to 10 minutes. So if you're having people over, um, this is an amazing way to spice up your board because it's nice freshly baked bread. And while that's baking, I'm gonna start off with my brie. The brie is such a good deal, only $2.99. And brie is sort of like, a not everyday type of cheese for me. It's like a special occasion type of cheese. It's not one we have very often. Um, so I definitely associate it with being more of like on the fancy side of things. And Aldi has the best deal when it comes to brie. I'm just serving it as it is. I'm just gonna cut it into some slices here. But if you had the extra budget, you could throw some honey or some maybe dried cranberries on there. I don't think it needs more than this. I prefer it just like on its own. So that is what I'm doing. I like to serve my brie with this little knife. Um, that way if someone wants a smaller piece, they can go ahead and make that happen. The next thing I am going to be doing is my other cheese. I have two cheeses for this board today. The other one is an extra sharp cheddar. These cheese blocks are so cheap at Aldi. This was only $1.69, and I'm just gonna go ahead and slice it. I like to choose one sort of you know special cheese and then one more everyday type cheese, depending on who's coming over, who you're serving this to. It's nice to have a more familiar cheese for people who like to stick with the basics. I chose the extra sharp because I think that made it just, you know, a little bit more flavorful, a little less basic, but still, it's a very classic cheese, a crowd pleaser, and some people just prefer that. Now, when I am assembling my cheese here on my uh, board, you'll notice I have sort of like a circle theme going here, so I decided to put my cheese slices in a circle. There's a lot of really creative, beautiful things you can do on your board. Just get creative with it. Um, but I think that this always looks good. Plus, I love that in the end, you have sort of this little well that's like in the center, and you could pop so many fun things in there. You could put like a strawberry or an olive. You'll see what I do with that in just a few minutes. I love adding a dip on a board. I think it just like switches it up a little bit. And I found this great spinach and artichoke tzatziki dip at Aldi. It was $2.65, which I think is an amazing deal. And I'm only going to use half of it here, so just a buck 33. And I like it because I can use the rest of it in like maybe a wrap later this week with Gianni's lunch or whatever. Really nice to have that around like as part of our groceries. I went ahead and put it in a ramekin. I love having ramekins. I find that I use them for so many different things and I think they look really nice. I think that every charcuterie board needs a nut of some kind and peanuts are the cheapest. I went ahead and went with the honey roasted because I think that maybe elevates it just a little bit more than your average cocktail peanut. 
These are only $1.75 for that container. I only used a quarter of it, so a whopping 44 cents worth of peanuts. And I went ahead and threw that in the ramekin as well. And my son Fox loves peanuts, so we'll definitely uh, eat the rest of those this week. And here I decided to just throw some peanuts in that little well. I'm really gonna try to fill up every square inch of this board today, just cause I think a big full board always looks just extra beautiful. Next, I'm going for the salami. Now, prosciutto is usually really popular on these boards and also other really expensive meats. I go right for the lunch mate salami. This is really basic, cheap stuff. Um, this was only $4.49 and we're only gonna use half of it. And here is the best trick that TikTok ever taught me. To make the perfect salami rose, all you need is a wine glass, take your salami, overlap them a bit, and just keep going around and around the glass. Um, again, I'm only using half of this, but if you wanted like a really big one, you could use a glass that had a really wide mouth, or if you had smaller like rounds of salami, um, you could definitely, you know, make a much thicker rose or whatever. I've done this a few times now and every time it, it looks perfect and this size of salami seems to work really well with it. So you just keep going around and around until there's really a really small hole in the center that you can barely see through. And this is also great because I can use the rest of this salami then for Gianni's lunches this week and all of these things really overlap with like our regular groceries, which anytime you can do that, it saves you money in the long run because you're not like stuck with like, I don't know, a bag of something weird that you're never going to use for anything else. And literally, like that's all you do. That's a salami rose. And now all we have to do is flip this bad boy over and impress all your friends. Seriously, did you know that's how easy it was to make a salami rose? Has everyone been doing this and I'm just late to the game? Let me know. Next, we are going to throw some fruit on there. I think all boards need a type of fruit. Pick what is seasonal and beautiful, because that's usually the cheapest is gonna be seasonal. Right now we have apples, which I love, especially because they go with the brie. And I like that you can buy just one, which brings our uh, cost down total for our like initial investment. This Honeycrisp cost me $1.67. It was kind of big for my slicer, it was huge. Um, and I ended up just like slicing those a little bit thinner just so that um, you know, they'd stretch a little bit farther with all of the great cheeses we got going on here. And I am just going to surround the brie with them. I love apples and brie together. I think it is just the most delicious combination, especially a honey crisp. So I was pretty happy with that. But if you had strawberries available to you, grapes are usually more expensive compared to other fruits. But if you got them, go with it. And again, you'll see I'm sticking with that sort of circular theme. And now that my bread just came out of the oven, it is nice and hot. Oh my gosh, it smelled so good. I just sliced it up and we are just going to add those around the tzatziki dip. Um, and that's a really easy way, a cheap way to really um, fill your board nice and full because they do take up a lot of space. So if you're working with a larger board like I am, those really made an impact. They looked really nice. And next we have crackers, because you need crackers. I chose a wheat cracker just so that it would contrast a bit with the white bread. And these are only $1.99, and I only used half the package, so adding on a dollar there to our total cost. Um, and I added those right there, but you'll see I moved them later. Remember, you can move things around, you know, it's like a piece of art. We want it to be balanced and all that stuff. I'm also adding pretzels. This might be a controversial item here because maybe they don't look as classy to everyone, but I cannot have a charcuterie board without pretzels. Pretzels are literally my favorite food. They are such a good deal, $1.32, and we're only using an eighth of the bag, so only 17 cents worth of pretzels here. So cheap, and I like that they're small. It's a really easy way to fill up all like those little gaps. I also like to add something sweet to my boards. My boards usually have some type of chocolate. I love these chocolate bars that come from Aldi because they are individually wrapped and I loved the color. I thought the color was really nice and sort of folly, that kind of jewel tone. 
Um, this chocolate was a dollar ninety nine, and there's five of them in there. I think I only managed to squeeze four of them in there, but I kind of had to like shuffle some things around. Um, but you could do like Ferrero Rochers. You could even do Hershey Kisses if you wanted to. I just love that little element of some chocolate in there. Um, and yeah, this is when I decided that those those crackers just didn't work there. So we shuffled them around a bit, but that's the beauty of the board. And the very last thing is very optional and not something I got at Aldi. I got some rosemary. I love at the very end when you add just something aromatic or something a little bit natural or beautiful. This rosemary smelled incredible. Obviously, we're not going to eat it, but it just makes like that last sort of like, I don't know, way to elevate it, the, the scent of it all. But if you have any sort of edible flower in your garden, maybe some dill, maybe some mint, any type of thing that you could add on there would be great. Obviously, if you don't have any, don't worry about it. It is not necessary to make this beautiful. It's just that, you know, little tiny bit at the end to really elevate it. And honestly, have you ever seen something so beautiful? I'm sure you have if you're on Instagram. But you too can make this board for grand total $15 and 28 cents for all of this you would easily like I don't know spend 50 plus dollars on something like this especially if you ordered it from a professional or went to a restaurant and the total investment for all of the things was $22 so really you don't need to head to the store with a ton of cash to make this happen All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Seriously, we grazed on this for lunch. We put it back in the refrigerator and we got it back out after dinner and we were munching on it before bedtime. It's just like a mix of all of my favorite things in one place. Leave me a comment down below. Do you charcuterie? Is this a thing you do? What do you always put on yours? Is there something that I didn't include that you always put on yours? I would love to hear it. It might be olives. Let me know if it's olives. I don't like olives, but I know a lot of people love them on their boards. So let me know in the comments down below. And of course, come on back for more. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.